Someone is present. The library. Librarian shuts down obnoxious protesters in university library. We have no idea who this guy is, but we're calling him legend. This is library. Over the weekend, a group of obnoxious anti-Trump protesters seemingly made a scene at the University of Washington library. Legend, whoever he is, apparently became enraged at the brats, or, uh, sorry, protesters' noisy noise. In a viral video recorded by King 5 Seattle reporter Alex Rosier, he can be seen shutting down the loud protesters hey. like a boss. Hey. This is library. And yeah, we really mean like a boss, because no matter your political affiliation, libraries must remain a place of study and or sleeping, boning, or recreational drug use, uh, depending on your life goals. Black Lives Matter protesters curse at white Dartmouth students. A Black Lives Matter protest at Dartmouth University in Hanover, New Hampshire turned ugly on Thursday when the demonstrators stormed the Baker Berry Library and screamed racially charged insults at students who were trying to get their study on. The protest was put on to bring attention to discrimination on Dartmouth's campus and the fact that a Black Lives Matter t-shirt display was torn down last week. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! The demonstration started peacefully before moving to the library, where things got pretty heated. According to eyewitness reports, the protesters marched into the library and accosted students who didn't join their marching and chanting. Riled up protesters reportedly said things like, F you filthy white f**ks, f you and your comfort, and called one student a filthy white bitch to her face. They reportedly told students who didn't join them to stand up, calling them a filthy racist white piece of One student who was studying in a private room was harassed when she tried to shut out the protesters. After the harassment reportedly made one female student cry, the protesters said, F your white tears. Netizens on Twitter have responded to the controversial demonstration, including Elijah R., who wrote, These black students are out of control, yelling at students in the library who are actually trying to study. Then there's Matthew Ricks, who tweeted, So Black Lives Matter holds a protest in a library. For most of them, it was the first time in a library, followed by the hashtag KeepItClassyBLM. Twitter user Sam White gave the demonstrators the benefit of the doubt, writing, Accusations against Dartmouth protesters doesn't match the video at all. Okay, well, maybe a little. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. A cat named Max in St. Paul, Minnesota was well known for often sneaking into a local college library. But he didn't become famous until he was eventually banned from the premises, with the image of a poster declaring his banishment going viral online. Max, the orange cat, owned by a McAllister College professor, was caught on camera a month ago sneaking into the college library. Here's the visual evidence of the furry trespasser. He didn't limit himself to the library either, and has even paid visits to the university's Spanish and Portuguese department. Basically, Max comes and goes as he pleases, probably thinking he owns the place. He's even been documented straight up sitting on people's laptops while they're trying to study. Although people were always happy to see him, Max was becoming a distraction. There were also some concerns over his safety, and he has since been banned from entering the library. Meanwhile, Max's adventures have inspired people to create illustrations, fake library cards, and even a short comic strip in his honor. Max doesn't give up easily, though. One staffer tweeted that he hangs out by the door and tries to run into the library as soon as someone opens it. Do you know Max the Cat? One thing Max's Max newfound fame has gotten him, some personal face-to-face -face time with McAllister president Brian Rosenberg. Man busted for dropping a deuce in library stairwell. For over a month now, police in Philadelphia have been trying to track down this man after he was caught on surveillance cameras heading into the stairwell of a library to poop. The footage was captured on December 17th in the Ludington Library, showing the yet-to-be-named suspect walking around the building moments before he does his dirty deed. <laughs> Enter the stairwell, the scene of the crime. His sweater removed, the dude looks prepared to do what he came here to do. A dirty doo-doo. 
With no skid marks to follow, the police were short on clues, but that's where social media came into play. The cops reached out to Facebook users for help, posting the video on their wall for all to see. This proved to be the winning strategy, as they were tipped off within hours of the post and have since identified the man. The police haven't released any information, but did make sure to thank their friends on Facebook. The response was, as you might expect, basically a lot of poop jokes. Who knew tracking down a defecation artist would be so hard to do? Texas City Council votes to evict cat from library. The White Settlement City Council voted two to one to remove a cat who has lived in the city's library for the past six years. Browser the cat has been crashing at the White Settlement Public Library for over half a decade. His supporters say he's great for pest control and helps attract children to the library. Those against having Browser in the library brought up the issue of people with cat allergies. The mayor blamed the motion on a city employee who wasn't allowed to keep a pet puppy at work. Browser has his own Facebook page and has rallied 618 signatures on an informal library petition against his eviction. This is why we can't stand the government. And on a side note, white settlement? What a surprise. It's in Texas. Missing SAT girl returns home. The high school girl from San Marino who ran away because of the overwhelming pressure of her SAT exam last Saturday returned home Monday evening. According to San Marino Police Department, Mira who finally contacted her family around 8.15 p.m. and told them that she was at the Los Angeles Public Library. Hiding in the library? Wow, that is so Asian. The police said that a surveillance video showed Mira boarding a bus which was bound for San Francisco. Mira was facing academic pressure and was already depressed about leaving China and studying in the United States. The SAT exams further pushed her to the limit. It is extremely fortunate that Mira did not run into any other trouble or danger while on the lam. During her disappearance, the Hu family created a website, HelpFindMira.com. The Hu family expressed their gratitude towards the San Marino and Arcadia police. High expectations Asian father says, Thank goodness you're safe. Now go study. Violist successfully sues public library for injury. A violist in Taiwan has successfully sued the Taipei Public Library for injuries and loss of income after an automatic glass door broke her finger and thumb. Ms. Jiang completed her education in Germany and is a professional violist. She performs in international concerts around the world. Well, she does when her finger isn't broken. Back in September 2013, Ms. Jiang was performing at an event being held at the Taipei Public Library. She was headed for the stage when an automatic door closed on her right hand, breaking her pointer finger and fracturing her thumb. Ms. Jiang has sued the public library and city for damages and loss of wages while she recovered from her injury. The city has finally granted her 50,000 US dollars. The Taipei Public Library has also conducted additional safety checks, ensuring that the automatic doors are programmed to remain open for at least 20 seconds before closing. An elderly Japanese man was arrested on Friday on suspicion of throwing half-eaten trays of curry into a Tokyo library's book return box on multiple occasions. The man, identified as Tatsumi Kaneyuki, was caught Friday evening throwing a half-eaten convenience store lunchbox containing curry rice into a drop box for box returns at the Nippori Library in Arakawa. The 61-year-old is now facing criminal charges after his actions left six books damaged. The library had reported a slew of similar incidents to police since January that forced them to dispose of more than 60 damaged books. Police officers lying in wait for the vandal caught him in the act. The suspect told officers he thought the box was a rubbish bin. In a series of acts police believe to be unrelated, nearly 300 copies of Anne Frank, the diary of a young girl, have been mutilated in municipal libraries all across Tokyo.